to politics uh, if we can now obviously the Senate trial is pending although we don't know when uh, you have said quote my objective first and foremost is to be fair to both sides you heard Senator Lisa Murkowski there were you also bothered at all when Majority Leader McConnell said there would be no daylight between him and the White House I think Senator McConnell is entitled to his opinion and his and his approach so is Senator Murkowski, so is Senator Schumer, so is Senator Blumenthal. If you look, Jake, at the Constitution, uh, the standing rules of the Senate, the uh, essays and analyses by the Congressional Research Service, if you look at the, uh, the case law, uh, Nixon v. U.S., not Richard Nixon, uh, a, a federal judge named Nixon, if you look at the case of uh, Porteous v. Barron, what you'll see is that when it comes to impeachment, the rule is that there are virtually no substantive rules. It's not a criminal trial. Uh, the, the, uh, the Senate is not really a jury. It's both jury and judge. The chief justice is not the, pres the judge. He's the presiding officer. There are no standards of proof. There are no rules of evidence. And every senator, unless we pass a, uh, a, a new rule by 51 uh, votes and the Senate is entitled to approach it his own way. Mm -hmm. I, I think many positions by many senators are calcified. I can only speak for me. Um, I'm going to keep an open mind. I want to be fair to both sides. When I thought that the House proceedings were unnecessarily unfair, and when the American people walk away from the Senate trial, if we ever have one, I don't want them saying, well, we were just run over by the same truck twice. Mm -hmm. It was unfair in the House and it was unfair in the Senate. I, I want people to think that it was, a, it was a level playing field. If it wasn't already obvious, both sides is just Republican speak for the other side is clearly right, but I wouldn't dare ever admit fault, so I'll just pretend that we're both right. Now, to be clear, Senator John Kennedy's claim that both sides are entitled to their approach is completely baseless. United States senators swear an oath to the Constitution that says, I solemnly swear that in all things appertaining to the trial of the impeachment of Donald Trump, President of the United States, now pending, I will do impartial justice according to the Constitution Constitution and laws, so help me God. It doesn't say anything about partisan justice or justice in cooperation with the subject of the trial. It says impartial justice. In other words, no, both sides aren't entitled to different approaches. The only approach here, as mandated by the United States Constitution, is an impartial one. And this statement by McConnell doesn't exactly scream impartiality. And everything I do during this, I'm coordinating with White House counsel. There will be no difference between the president's position and our position as to uh, how to handle this uh, to the extent that we can. We're, we don't have the kind of ball control on this that a typical issue, for example, comes over for the House. If, if, if I don't like it, we don't take it up. We have no choice but to take it up, but we'll be working through this process, hopefully in a fairly short period of time, in total coordination uh, with the White House Counsel's Office and the people who are representing the President in the well of the Senate. Kennedy goes on to defend his position by stating that there are no rules, and so McConnell is justified in saying that he'll coordinate with the White House. Only, while there might not be a prescribed set of rules pertaining to impeachment trials in the Constitution, again, there is an oath of office pertaining to impeachment. In other words, as much as Kennedy would have you believe that impeachment is just the Wild West and anyone can say whatever they want and that anything goes so long as a trial is held, that's not true. At the minimum, the bare minimum, senators are to uphold their oath of office, an oath that expressly mandates impartial justice. He goes on to extend this both sidesism by claiming that the House proceedings were unfair, which is completely baseless. First of all, the House followed rules put forth by Republicans in 2015 and signed into law by then Republican Speaker John Boehner. So while it's nice to see a member of the GOP finally admit that their tactics don't pass the smell test, that's not on the Democrats. Beyond that, Republicans don't actually have any substantive examples as to why the House proceedings were unfair, other than that they exposed Donald Trump and his criminal behavior. Republicans were allowed to call witnesses, although not everyone they wanted, including Hunter and Joe Biden and the whistleblower, and again, Again, the majority has the right to refuse witnesses that they didn't believe were relevant, according to rules set forth by Republicans. Republicans were even able to call a constitutional scholar, Jonathan Turley, who admitted that Trump's call was anything but perfect. So 
I get that the GOP didn't enjoy the fact that witness testimony was damning for Trump, that firsthand witnesses conceded that Trump withheld military assistance to extort Ukraine into opening an investigation into Biden, that the Ukrainians knew that the announcement of a probe was a condition for official action, that Trump didn't actually care about an investigation so much as he simply wanted the soundbite of the announcement of it. But just because things don't go your way doesn't make them unfair. Inconvenient, sure but not unfair. But this is what Republicans do. If they can't complain about substance, they'll complain about the process. And if they can't complain about the process, they'll just outright lie. They'll pretend that the House's impeachment inquiry was somehow unfair, even though at no point were any rules broken. They'll claim that senators are entitled to a rigged trial, even though their oath of office forbids it. And of course, they'll pretend that Trump has done nothing wrong, even though he is the single most corrupt president in American history.